What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So I weighed in this morning at 172 pounds, which means I'm down three pounds in three weeks, averaging a pound per week. And it's crazy. Super excited because I've been tracking my macros. I've been eating within my parameters, but some days I'll be under, some days I'll be over. Still enjoying life, hence the More Life series, right? I'm still going out to eat. I'm still eating ice cream. You know, yesterday I had Peruvian chicken and and fried rice and fried yucca, yucca, I forget how you pronounce it. But yeah, and my abs are starting to come in. Also, I just wanna take this time to say thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I honestly don't know what the channel is about. It's just like my lifestyle vlogging channel, but lately my Marine Corps related videos have been getting a lot more exposure and you guys are asking me about Marine Corps related stuff. So, in this video I'm gonna talk about how to get physically fit and prepared for the Marine Corps because I know a lot of you guys are thinking about joining the military or the Marines specifically. This video can apply to any branch really because if you're fit enough to be a Marine, the chances are you're fit enough to be in any other branch. Just to show you guys how not perfect I am when it comes to tracking macros, as you can see yesterday I had 2,500 calories, the day before that 1,800, the day before that 2,500, 24, 21. So yeah, you guys get the idea. When it comes to losing weight, when it comes down to cutting, you don't have to be super precise down to every single calorie, every single gram. People tend to lose sleep over stuff like that. I'm just here to tell you that it's not that serious unless you're cutting for a show and you're like one week out, even two weeks out, then it's a different story. But for most people, the average person, two things really, consistency and being in a deficit. As long as you're in a caloric deficit over a good period of time, you're gonna lose weight, and that caloric deficit can come from two things, eating less or burning more calories, or even the combination of both. Now, when people ask me how to get physically fit and prepared for the Marines, I think they're really asking uh, what exercises and routines they need to do in order to get in shape uh, to be physically prepared, right? But instead of giving you guys like a list of routine or a training program or anything like that, my main priority is just to give you guys a good foundation of understanding of what it takes to be physically prepared in the Marines so that way you guys can form your own routine and your own training with that knowledge. Because that's what I believe people should ultimately strive to do, be self-sufficient and seek edification in everything that we do. So let me just approach it like this. All right, so in the Marines, you're going to be expected to do Marine things, right? So that essentially means to be an efficient killing machine. The key word in that is efficient. You are going to be running a lot. You're going to be running with your rifle, you're going to be running with your with ammo cans, you're going to be running with a heavy OB pack on your back, you're going to be running, carrying a buddy sometimes. You're going to be doing a lot of running. So if you don't like running, well, you should reconsider joining the Marines because Marines love to run. Now, you're also going to be doing a lot of obstacle courses. So this means getting over walls, getting over barriers, uh, climbing ropes, just doing all sorts of obstacle clearing. In the Marines, you're also going to be doing a lot of hiking. Now, this isn't your nice scenic hike to the top point of Sugarloaf Mountain in your leggings and Nike running shoes. This is a hike at a pace in between a fast walk and a slow jog with over 100 pounds of gear on your body, wearing combat boots, and holding your weapon. So, in order to train for these conditions, I kind of broke it down to three categories in no specific order. Uh, the, three, the three categories are cardiovascular endurance, pool muscles, and legs. Now keep note of what I did not mention, which is upper body push muscles. So I'm talking about your chest, your shoulders, you know, the bench press, movements that are not going to translate in a world world application, especially not in the Marine Corps. And that's because I truly believe people focus way too much on developing their chest and their bench press, but they, they fail to realize that a strong bench press is not going to help you in basic and combat training. Let me just put that out there. 
Instead, you should be really focusing on those three things that I mentioned, cardiovascular endurance or cardio, your ability to sustain uh, long periods of high intensity training, pull muscles, so this is pretty much everything that consists of pulling something towards you, so your lats, your traps, your, your biceps even, um, legs, because you know, you're gonna be doing a lot of hikes with lots of gear on your back, so you wanna really train your legs and get them strong. Now, I'm not saying to completely neglect your push muscles or your chest, but just bear this in mind, in the military, your legs, your pull muscles, and your cardiovascular endurance are gonna come first before you ever have to use your chest. In a combat situation, you're gonna find yourself running around sporadically for long periods of time. You're gonna have obstacles to get over, ledges to climb, ropes to climb. You're gonna be using your legs because you're gonna have to carry a lot of weight on your back or maybe even a buddy who just got injured. You're gonna have to bear the, all that weight on your legs so you need strong legs. This is why the Marine Corps utilizes pull-ups instead of push-ups uh, on their physical fitness test because pull-ups are a much more accurate barometer of functional strength. Now, I know some of you guys are wondering at this point, where does bodybuilding and powerlifting training come into play while getting physically fit for the Marine Corps? And my honest answer is, it really doesn't. If you wanna bodybuild, if you wanna powerlift, you do that aside from your training, get physically prepared for the Marines because like we just mentioned, it's not gonna help you when it comes to doing things in the Marines. In the Marines, it's all about your cardio, your ability to pull yourself over obstacles, and your legs. Even. We're at Bidim. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> the classic. The classic. And I got the pasture. So it wouldn't be a more life episode without going out to eat. We are at this place called Bidim, which is essentially like a Korean Chipotle. Oh, so full. How was it, boo? <laughs> <laughs> Says it all. All right guys, so as far as structuring a training routine in order to get physically prepared for the Marines, it really doesn't have to be too fancy. Um, just pick a routine, really that consists of running, doing back movements, so pull-ups, deadlifts, Romanian rows, and then legs, so squats, leg presses, uh, any variation of those movements. Running is just one of those things that you have to do to get better at it. I sucked at running before I joined the Marines, and it's just, when I you know, did it more often, I just got better at it. It's just one of those things that you cannot just expect to get better at without doing. So if you guys can't run a mile, start at half a mile, and then a week later, run a mile, and a week after that, run a mile and a half. Just gradually progress until you can run 10 miles. Soon, before you know it, you'll be able to, trust me. Um, one thing though I will mention is for running, form helps a lot. Having good form, having a good running form will help your run time a lot. And what I mean by good running form is, I'll demonstrate now, most people run with their arms swinging everywhere like this. You know, with their arms swinging around, and that's fine, except when it comes to long distances. When you're running long distances, you want to have your arms working with you, not against you. You want your arms to help your body's momentum running. So, instead of running like this, have your arms come straight back and straight forth like this. This is not natural, this is not inherent, so this is something that you have to constantly work on, um, so that way it becomes a habit, and eventually you'll be able to run like this. And uh, it'll feel awkward at first, but when you're running, it's gonna look like pretty much a straight back, straight forward. Now, second tip for running, people naturally run upright. What, what I mean by that is they run straight up, with their spine perpendicular to the ground. What helps me is I like to imagine that I'm running with my body tilted forward. So what that allows is, for me, it allows longer strides because when your body uh, feels like it's falling forward, your body, your legs, naturally go into longer strides. I'll demonstrate now, when you, when you feel like you're falling forward, your body automatically takes a longer stride.